Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. In this video, we're demonstrating the capabilities of 3-in-1 type machines, MIG, TIG, STICK. These are MIG, Lift Arc TIG, and STICK. And the two machines I'm using for this demo are the Everlast MTS-250S and the Thermalark Fabricator 252i. Both of these machines are comparable in their amperage output and capabilities. Now why would anybody want a 3-in-1 machine that won't take aluminum? Because this is strictly lift arc DC TIG. Well, if you're fabricating like you would be just using a regular old MIG machine, the reason you would want a 3-in-1 machine is because you've, you've got now the ability to TIG weld stainless steel and also stick weld when you need it. So think of it as a, as a MIG machine that also TIGs and sticks and it also all of a sudden makes more sense. I'm fabricating something like this and all of a sudden something comes in the door that's a lot better suited for TIG, something that's more precision, thinner, needs to use a, you know, possibly a, a different filler metal like 309 stainless or something like that. It's very easy just to hook up the TIG torch. And of course you need a bottle of argon instead of the mixed gas, but it's very easy to hook up the TIG torch and just start TIGing. Or when stainless steel walks in the door that uh, you know, they don't want MIGged, you got to start TIGging, like this shaft I repaired in, in, uh, in a previous, a, a very recent video, you can TIG weld stainless steel. This job wasn't done with necessarily with a, a TIG MIG stick, but it certainly could have been very easily. Because you've got foot pedal capability, it's just that you have to touch off with a lift arc. But lift arc is not all that bad. So in a previous video, I already showed the uh, how each machine compares and how it fared burning a 1 8 70 18 rod on a multi-pass T-joint, a three-bead T-joint, basically a you know one pass in the root and then stacking two beads over it. And both machines uh, laid down beads like this at, at about 130 amps that would, uh, you know, the slag just peeled off of just fine. So both machines didn't fine on, fine on stick, and now it's time to kind of demo what they'll do on MIG. So just a brief little overview of the guts and the inner workings inside the cabinet here. You can see this is the thermal arc. It's got gear driven drive rollers where both rollers actually have a drive force behind them. And I'm loading some 030 ER70S6 wire. I'm gonna I'm gonna use this same spool of wire on both machines. And this is kind of how that goes. This is kind of how it feeds through the feeder mechanism there and held on by a little pin. And I'm just working on plugging in the, the MIG gun, getting the control little plug plugged in and getting set up for MIG. And what I wound up using here was about 19 and a half volts and 265 inches a minute. And the inductance is, is adjustable on both machines. And so I played with that a little bit till I found something that I liked on each machine which was around 50 on the thermal arc and a little bit less than 50 on, on the Everlast as far as the inductance go. You can see there's a lot of different settings here, uh, arc wave shapes and stitch mode, and you can display the wire feed speed in, in uh, metric system or imperial system. So I, again, an inductance on, uh, on about 50, and we'll tack this vertical lap joint up and weld it uphill. This is a quarter inch quarter inch steel lap joint and we're going to weld it uphill and whenever I do a joint like this I try to take several several runs at it and make sure my my uh, gun cable is not hanging up on anything make sure my gloves not hanging on a sharp burr or tack or anything and it always helps to take a take a run at something before I light up because when you flip the hood down things just look different the technique I'm going to be using is like a series of little small triangles which actually traces the front edge of the puddle and then you come straight across and the reason for that is it's logical. The front, the front leading edge of the puddle is where things happen. That's where the penetration happens. So I'm just kind of tracing the front, making a little step upward each time, progression, and then coming straight across and watching the front edge of the puddle to make sure it cuts into the root of the joint. And that is the finished weld on the thermal arc. And this is the contact tip nozzle set up on this Tweco gun. It's back up in there a little farther than I would like it. I prefer it to be more like flush or actually protruding out just a tad. But this is the way it comes. It, it did okay like this. It's just my preference. And I would trim that nozzle if it was my machine. It's going back though. All right, now let's run the same thing on the Everlast MTS-250S. The S stands for Synergic 
because it's got a synergic mode in there where you can kind of just uh, set the wire feed speed and, and it automatically follows voltage. The, the thermal arc has a mode that, that way as well. But the burn back control on this particular machine is inside the cabinet right here. Once you get that set, you're pretty much not going to mess with that a whole lot once you get a setting that you like. What a burn back control does is it burns the wire back to keep you from having to snip every single time. So we're going to load that same 10 pound spool on here and you can see the little mechanism, the tensioning mechanism in there with the spring. And we'll get that spool loaded on here in just a second and get this one set similar voltage and wire feed speed settings and we'll weld the same joint, same position with this same spool of wire, hopefully to, you know, not vary too much from machine to machine so we can kind of uh, kind of see how each one does. Again, this one also has a aluminum cast wire feeder mechanism with metal components. That's a good thing. Got this Euro style MIG gun plug in that's got all the gas connectors and, and whatnot on there. And this style gun. I believe we would call this a either a Trafamet or a Benzel style. I believe it's a Benzel style gun. Again, the, the, the nozzle, the, the contact tip is recessed back up in there just a little further than I would like it. I would trim the nozzle. Uh, I've hardly ever found a machine that won't run better that way. There are some that have synergic modes that act up if you trim the nozzle, but um, for me, I've never found one that won't weld better with the nozzle flush. So we're going to set this thing up for MIG here. You can see all the all the uh, different modes are, are visible with a touch panel. It's a combination of touch panel buttons and knobs and you can get your settings. So I'm going to set it to 19 and a half volts and again about 265 inches a minute using that 030 uh, ER 70S6 wire. It says 280 right there but I backed it off to 265 before I got started. And we'll get this thing tacked up. Same holder, same thickness metal, same everything. And again, take a few dry runs so I can get positioned right. And we'll see how this does. Same technique. I'm trying to duplicate things in, in, uh, in my mind and try to use exactly the same technique and, and try to produce the same weld. With the, with the uh, wire feed speeds and voltage set set the same using the same exact wire, I'm expecting things to come out very similar. And I'm not disappointed. Pretty much very similar, slight differences in the arc, but again, I didn't have the inductance set exactly the same. So, well, there you see the two welds. Not a lot of difference. Here the Thermal Arc uh, Fabricator 252i is on the bottom and the Everlast 250 MTS was on the top. And just for, just for kicks, I'm going to go ahead and slice a couple of sections out of these with the bandsaw and give them a quick sanding and polish just to see what kind of penetration, what kind of bead profile. And I'm going to use some passivating solution here that I have had a long time, which is basically a, some nitric acid solution. It's designed to... to uh, to dissolve free iron off of stainless steel, but it sure does reveal a, a weld nugget. And those both look very similar. Adequate penetration into the root of the joint. And a little, of course, they're a little crowned, a little, uh, a little convex because of being in a vertical position, but that's pretty normal. And so we'll hook up the TIG now. Now the Everlast has a foot pedal that comes with it, so I'm going to hook up the foot pedal. Unfortunately, the, the Thermal Arc came with a, a, a thumb wheel, so we just have to live with that but still it's going to try to duplicate and work on the same welds. And we'll set this thing up for TIG now. And there's some extra settings for TIG you, you're concerned about that you aren't with MIG. Like I have to introduce the foot pedal uh, into, the, into the system there by clicking the pedal. And then I've got to set post flow and things like that. But I'm going to set this thing uh, post flow at 10 seconds, which is the max on, on this machine, which is a little lower than I would like to see. Um, there are some ways around that. But I'm sitting at 10 and 10 seconds and then 63 amps, one amp for every thousandths of thickness. And I'm using 063 material, 16 gauge stainless steel, which is also 1.6 millimeters. And I've got it set up here in a little purge, blo a purge block. This is a, a makeshift uh, test fixture for, that, that provides argon gas to the backside of, of joints like this. 
and for developing parameters for stainless steel, it, it comes in really handy because it provides it provides argon backing gas to the back of stainless steel. So if you set this thing up, if you were if you were setting up parameters for 16th inch thick uh, wall stainless steel tubing, you could set the parameters up on this, um, and they would they would translate to the tubing just fine as long as the wall thickness was the same. So again, the the foot pedal is a little touchy on this Everlast. Took a little getting used to, but you see this is 16 gauge, and I was able to light up on the on the corner without melting it away. So after a little getting used to, it worked okay. Even though I've got the machine set at, at 63 amps, probably didn't even use 50 because stainless doesn't quite take one amp per thousandth of an inch. That's kind of like a baseline for carbon steel. Stainless takes a little bit less. Aluminum takes a little bit more amperage per one thousandth of an inch. We'll get the TIG gun hooked up on this uh, thermal arc now. The, 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 the TIG torch needs to go into the, the electrode negative socket. So you got DC electrode negative. And I got to figure out a way to hold this torch where it's comfortable with the thumb wheel because the, always the problem with a thumb wheel or finger wheel is you're, you tend to move the torch while you're adjusting amperage. So that's what I, that's what I encountered here, but it takes, it, it, you get used to it. It just does take a little practice. So I'm getting a tack on this one now and then we'll do a little welding just like we did with the other unit with the foot pedal. So you can see I'm a little shaky there at the beginning, but it does have enough control to to light up on the corner of one sixteenth inch thick stainless without without blowing it away, and that was my concern with this with a lift arc machine like this. Was it gonna is it gonna have low enough start and enough control to weld thin sheet metal? And yeah, both of them do. That's the answer to that question, and that's the benefit to having a MIG TIG stick is because if some thin sheet metal comes in the door, it'd be tough to do with MIG. All you got to do is hook different gas up. And you're good to go. Uh, just a little brief demo here. On, you can see how you have to hold the torch and what it looks like. You have to touch off with lift arc, get the arc going, and then adjust the amperage with the thumb wheel here. And then, you know, when you get to the end of the bead, taper off. And, and again, it always moves the torch around a little bit. So foot pedal, usually a much better way to go. Again, if, you, if all you've got is a, a, a finger switch, torch switch, or a thumb wheel control, you get used to it. It just takes a while. It just takes practice. Well, that is it for this week's video. That's the demonstration of both these three-in-one MIG-TIG stick machines. Thanks for watching.